Hello, everyone. Welcome. This is the third uh, workshop organized by Spark Europe and uh, the European Network of Open Education Librarians. And uh, we are happy to uh, welcome you to embrace the open with us. Uh, today, we are going to talk about how the open textbook publishing kitchen works. It's going to be a very practical workshop, and I'm happy to be there with uh, Sylvia Moes from the Freie University in uh, the Netherlands, Mira Baustzuk from uh, Groningen uh, in the Netherlands too, Margaret Nieborg, uh, who works in Groningen Library too in the Netherlands, Lambert Eller, from uh, the Leibniz Information Center for Science and Technology in Germany, and from the same uh, information center, Simon Worthington, and I hope that I pronounced the, all your names correctly. Uh, thank you for being with us as a facilitator. So I'm very much looking forward to learn from you today and uh, practice in the open textbook kitchen myself. And now I leave the floor to Mira who is going to uh, wrap up the previous two workshops. But uh, before that, just one, one last uh, note on my side. We are recording this workshop and we are going to share it uh, um, in our YouTube channel. So in case you don't want uh, uh, for your image to be shared or your name to be shared, just consider uh, keeping your camera closed and change your name just in case you want to, to chat or to open your microphone and enjoy the workshop now welcome everyone thank you paula welcome everyone good afternoon everyone uh, really glad to be here for the third time in a row indeed as paula mentioned this is um, a third workshop in a series of open textbook um, embrace the open uh, types of workshops that we are doing together with several institutions across europe and uh, let's see what we're going to be doing today. So what our program, uh, what we have on the menu for today to show you how our publishing kitchens work in our respective universities. So today we'll have a very brief recap of workshops number one and two, just to look back and see what we did, what we discussed there. And we will go on to explore the publishing platforms and tools that each of our universities uses. Uh, Freie Universiteit uh, Amsterdam uses Wicke Weismaken. Uh, the TIB Leibniz Center uses ADA Multiformat and ADA Computational. My own University of Groningen in the Netherlands uses Open Monograph Press and Pressbooks. So we'll see uh, what that actually entails and how uh, those platforms and tools work. And we'll have a fun activity. Uh, you'll get to run very quickly for 10 minutes your own open textbook project. And uh, we'll also get together uh, in the plenary session to summarize, discuss, share our insights. So it's going to be a full program, but hopefully uh, you find it uh, well interactive, nice and um, enriching for yourselves. Now, let's look back and see what we did in the first workshop. Uh, that one had to do with a more general introduction to open textbooks. We looked um, briefly at more general concepts of open textbooks and the benefits of open textbooks um, in education, in educational settings. We also looked at the opportunities to integrate open education into course design and instructional practices that the teachers are busy with when designing and giving their education to students. We also looked at the current landscape of open textbook publishing practices in several universities, uh, both here in Europe, but also across the ocean in the US and Canada. We looked at really nice uh, examples of open textbooks published there, co-created with students as well. And we also reflected together on what opportunities and challenges lie ahead and are facilitated by open textbooks. It was a very interesting and lively discussion. And you're also invited to uh, look back to rewatch it. Um, we have links and all the materials uh, saved and you'll have access to them in the slide, um, in the, on the slides that uh, Paula shared the link to, uh, or I hope we'll share the link to in the chat. So this was workshop number one. Now, we also had a second workshop of this series, talking more about the organizational side of things, how to organize an open textbook uh, publishing pilot. So we looked at the reasons to begin with it, and we also examined some steps that our institutions took to organize the support base uh, for starting to publish your own open textbooks and starting pilot projects around them. 
We also uh, had the role of a librarian as one of the central themes in that discussion um, in the process of creating and publishing open textbooks. Uh, we talked about other stakeholders that could get and would get involved in specific context around open textbook publishing, uh, taking into account the needs and requirements of our projects. And we also reflected together uh, with all of you on how to ignite but also maintain the collaboration between very different parties involved in a working team to make an open textbook um, a reality, but also to potentially translate it into a permanent service. Um, we uh, had a sort of a panel discussion um, in here and uh, also involved the audience quite a lot. So if you're interested and you, if you missed uh, these workshops or you would like to look back at, back at them, we invite you to consult uh, these links uh, that are here on the screen. And with this, I would like to give the floor to Lambert, who will talk about this very workshop, uh, the third one on the Open Textbook Publishing Kitchen. Thanks a lot, Mira. And uh, yeah, as uh, uh, Paola just pointed out in the meeting chat, also the slides of this meeting will be shared afterwards on Zenodo. So you do not uh, take a, <laughs> a handwritten notice on everything that we show here. In this workshop, we have a few very specific learning uh, objectives for you in mind. So one is we know that there are many different tools around to create textbooks. And we want to make sure that you have a good overview of some of the main tools out there that are really uh, in use or have been used by several of these open textbook projects. And we want you to understand uh, what are the uh, most specific features and also, which is maybe the most important link, um, how certain features of those textbooks in terms of the learning experience. So what can you actually do with those digital textbooks as well as the sustainability of those textbooks, um, how they relate to them so that you uh, make your choice which tools to use um, in this regard that you, yeah, that you consider these features that you find important about your textbooks. And uh, last not least, we want to reflect with you about um, what needs to be done in our area. So we, we, we are all uh, advancing the use, the development and use of open textbooks. But what can we do to make this landscape better? Um, and uh, how do we uh, move forward from here? Um, yeah, with this, I give back to Paola. No, uh, sorry. Sylvia. To Sylvia. <laughs> it's okay. It's okay. Yes, I will give you a smart, uh, small introduction to Wikiwijs Maken, which uh, you see on the next slides. Uh, why we choose for that uh, platform? Wikiwijs Maken is paid by the government in the Netherlands, and it's an open character, so everything is open to the maximum what you share and create there, and how you publish it. Um, for me, 2017, I had to work in a project with authors uh, to write an open textbook on toxicology together with 65 authors in Europe. So that was quite of a challenge to start as my first project with open textbooks, but uh, we, we succeeded in that. And um, we did look at OpenStax, iBooks author at that moment, and Wikiwijs Maken. And most of the points you see here, the futures, uh, features were scored by Wikiwijs uh, Maken. For example, that um, it must be accessible free for students and teachers as well. But also the teachers do not have to have uh, HTML knowledge to create an open textbooks, for example, and it must be modular and to integrate it into the learning environment and interactive supporting our blended learning strategy. If we go to the next slide, you see an interface how the students uh, see that uh, open textbooks. Now you look at an HTML page where you have an introduction on the authors and on the left side, you see all the, um, um, all the elements in that open textbook. Um, on the top, you see um, a design because we work together with other institutions. So also a designer created this and you can work with templates um, to 
uh, have a fixed template where everyone is using the same letter type colors and everything. So it's not matching, mixing up. On the next slide, you will see uh, a type of text and uh, you can put in video, audio, animations, interactive quizzes, um, and it's working very well to copy and paste the information from the documents the teachers have into this platform and the via the uh, styling, uh, it's directly in the right format which is needed. On the next slide, you will see the interactive questions, quizzes, and interaction with content. So you can create timelines, you can compare two uh, different pictures over each other, for example, but you can also work with different types of quizzes, which you see on the next slide. Uh, this is interactive video. And then after that, yes, you have different kinds of questions like multiple choice, drag and drop, in uh, priorities and that kind of things. And it's modular as well. So we publish every uh, section apart. So chapter one, and then the output formats are PDF, an ebook, uh, an ebook format, integration in a learning environment with one click. And on the bottom, you see that you can copy uh, this chapter and other authors can work on, on that um, context. Um, while the URL is staying the same if you want to. On the next slide, you see the integration in the LMS. So you can create a chapter in the LMS. You can create the whole textbook in the LMS. In our Canva system, you just send it as an external source and you give in the URL and then it's integrated, interactive, and students don't have to leave the uh, electronic learning environment. On the next slide, we see the backend. So you log in with uh, an Edu account. And then when you have done that, you come in this um, next slide environment. And there you see a list of all the authors. You see when who is working on what. And on the right side, you see um, the setup for a template, uh, which is in Dutch Shablon. And um, you can easily manage um, and give um, access to people, different kinds of people in different roles and work on the same platform and um, style, so to say. Um, yes, um, like I said, it's very easy to copy and paste the information. So you have two lines, header one and header two, two layers. And then you can just like in Microsoft or other products, um oops i don't see my slides anymore they're gone okay my slides are gone in this, in this moment now can you see the shared screen sylvia yeah yeah i saw okay. it yeah it's now gone anyways um um it's a little bit it's i can see you all of you but i don't see the slides anymore this is weird. Okay, I try to go further and improv improvise without my slides. Um, so um, on the right side, you see image and uh, all kinds of things and text. You can easily make a choose uh, a choice and integrate them and go um, go further uh, from that moment. And then the next slide. And what is on the next slide? <laughs> Because I don't and this one is publishing. The next slide uh, oh, yeah, okay. is called thank publishing so about yeah. EduSources, EduRap. Yeah. yeah, okay. Thank you so much. Yeah. So uh, the metadata, you have different tabs in um, uh, Wikiwijs Maken, and then you can publish um, your uh, chapter or the whole book or both. And uh, the metadata is then going to EduRap and via EduRap. The book is uh, published in Wikiwijs Maken and in uh, in Wikiwijs and in uh, Edu Sources uh, as well. Okay, and then the next slide. Mira. The next one is a screenshot of Edu Sources environment. What it looks yeah. like when you find uh, the resource yeah. there. That is the way how it's published. Yes. Okay. Thank you. And then the next slide. Manual online and support desk. 
Yeah. Okay. That is about sustainability, and this this uh and platform is online for um eight years, almost nine years now, and um it's sustainable. We work together, Surf and Kennisnet. Uh, to work, to collaborate and to develop this platform further. We are at the moment working on an English version because it's only in Dutch and that's a pity. We really want to have an English version of that. And because it's paid by the government, um, we have a nice uh, integration in higher education. We published 32 textbooks in this platform and uh, there is a support desk. If you have problems, they respond uh very quick the response is very quick and um we work together on sharing knowledge and an open source kind of method to uh integrate it further and uh, develop it further and in, in, integrate it in the learning environments yes so that's it in short yeah thanks a lot sylvia very much in time and uh, now uh, we have a few minutes for your questions, or uh, if you want to discuss what you just heard and learned about Wikiways. I don't see anything yet in the chat. You can either, uh, we are so few people here. It's not worth it to have like a, a chat or raising your hand virtually. Just open your microphone, please. Um, I, yeah, thanks. Thanks for the presentation. Really great. Um, so I suppose I'd kind of ask like about um, things about the author, like over the life of the publication, because like you said, you're producing 32 textbooks. And um, so do the authors get feedback over yeah. it in terms of like yeah. metrics or yeah. further this editions? Is, toxicology is a peer reviewed um, textbook. Thank you for your question. I did not mention that. Yes. Yeah. Yes. So you have a review process, a yeah. peer, peer review peer process review. during the, yeah, during the creation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I have another question, Sylvia. Uh, yeah. uh, how long is this process took in time and also how many people have been working on this? Uh, 65 authors. It was okay. uh, a project of stimuleringsregeling, so um, a program in the Netherlands by SURF. So, uh, it was our first textbook. We have to make a choice for platform. We have to set up, uh, find a way how to start with textbooks, how to support it from the library and so on. So in total, it was two years of time, but that was only because it was the first time everything and, oh, and a large textbooks of 700 pages. So, uh, <laughs> and, um, and uh, the 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 version is now uh, hosted in uh, CTEC, a European organization of toxicologists, who are looking after to refresh it every year because the development of toxicology is going very rapidly. At this moment, we can produce uh, a bigger textbooks like this in half a year, and we also have smaller textbooks in two weeks. So it's. Yeah. Thank you. You what? also, yeah, you already answered my second question. Thank you. <laughs> okay. Okay. Sylvia. Uh, one more question. Oh, sorry. sorry. Go Neva. ahead. Go ahead, Lambert. Yeah, I also wanted okay. to ask a question, but you can go ahead. Okay. Okay. Uh, Sylvia, is there something like a roadmap for the further development of Wikiways? Uh, do yeah. you know something about this? And yeah. uh, do you have a say about this as a user of the platform? Yeah, 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 yes. Yeah. Rinda, Legrand and, and me, myself, are working on a roadmap together with Kennisnet and Surf. Um, our first is the translation in English. Uh, that is the most high important thing. And then we would like to work with an OOR, Open Educational Resources Mixer, so you can easily mix all kinds of things in the textbooks and what you find in uh, edu sources. So if you find a nice a video clip or so you can say okay i want to mix this in my textbooks and um i want to have this powerpoint or whatever so we are working on uh, that uh, as well um that are the main things in the shorter moment of time but um later on we are in discussion now together with kennisnet on a roadmap but these two things are coming up most quickly and thereafter, I will give a more detailed outline of a roadmap and publish that um, and share it with you. Yes. 
Thanks a lot. Now, yeah, Mira, time question. for your last question. <laughs> Yeah, a quick one, uh, Sylvia. Um, you mentioned 32, having published 32 textbooks. That's quite a lot and probably yeah. spans a whole range of subjects. Do you see a lot of difference in the needs across different faculties? And can you cater to all of them with this platform? Um, yeah. Is it universal enough for that? Yeah, yeah. So far, so far, the answer is so far it is. And yes, I also see differences. For example, the smaller textbooks are coming from the medical department to give a short outline on a medical problem and say, okay, this is a med medical problem, this is the cases, and this is kind of nice material, how to interact it and how you can uh, test yourself and have uh, guidance in small topics. So then in two weeks of time, a textbook is published. Um, and we also see it on street law when we have a big uh, a textbook also how to give classes on street law with a lot of formats, formats, educational formats to set up your um, learning design. And that is also a project what is bigger and then you see other needs. But uh, for example, in uh, toxicology, they also work with a lot of uh, formulas and this and that, that works fine too. So, so far we can we can cover everything what we needed. Yes, thank you. Good to hear. I think there was someone else starting to talk. I'm very sorry. Uh, oh, yes, that was me, but I heard please one go more ahead. question. So please go ahead. Yeah, go please, please go okay. ahead. Uh, yeah. So it was just a very small technical question because the screenshots, uh, Sylvia, that you showed us all had a Dutch interface. Yeah. That's so correct. I was wondering, does it have an English interface as well? No, or is that's what I just said. Well, you have uh, to sorry, I, I, I must have missed that. Yeah. We have to translate that. That is our first uh, highest priority at the okay, moment. Yes. yes. Yeah, yeah, Thank yeah. You. But even with the Dutch interface, we work together with 65 people in Europe too. So uh, we just give one time a small introduction. I said, this is this and that, and then people can work with it. Not optimal. Our first priority is to translate this platform yes. because we really want to have an English version. Yes. Sorry, I missed that. Lots of information. That's, that's so fine. That's fine. That's fine. Yeah, thanks a lot also for your questions. If you have still more questions to Sylvia, please don't hesitate to use the chat. This is what the chat is for. And with this, I would like to give the stage to Simon, who will tell us a bit about the open text publishing pipelines at TIB in Germany. Please, Simon. Great, thank you. Uh, thank you all for being here. Thanks, Lambert. Um, so yeah, so Next Gen Books, this is the service that we produce at TAB, um, at the Open Science Lab, and, and Lambert is part of this too, um, uh, for, from the book sprint side of things. Um, and um, as I lay out here, we, we do three things as part of that, um, part being uh, about doing book sprints, but the production, and I say then the publishing because there kind of can be two different things, the getting it out in the world. Um, and I would say that, and yeah, and I'm gonna take you over two bits of technology we have, uh, uh, the pipelines as we call them. Um, so yeah, you can move on to the next slide, please. Um, so the pipeline, one is about around multi-format publishing. So we call them pipelines because we put together existing bits of open source software. So here we've got uh, a real-time academic editor, Fidus Writer, and now we will do the connecting part. So these things might have not previously been connected. Uh, we then use a CSS um, typesetter. Uh, this is the... Um, this is Biblio style, uh, which is, like a, yeah, like, as I say, a type for typesetting, but for multi-format. Um, and then we've really chained them together to make the outputs go to GitHub or GitLab. So we get the versioning out of GitHub and GitLab, and we can put the we can put the yeah the the outputted uh, publication there. So um, in terms of a um, yeah a, a pipeline and what we do with it, this is the, the, this is what we have put together. Um, we can go to the next slide, please. Um, so kind of like, yeah, so breaking down those parts, book sprints, um, production, well, other book sprints in the two platforms. I'll just pick up book sprints first. Um, really, these are 
you know, I, I mean, I'm sure you all kind of know book sprints, but just very important in terms of like what we what we can get out of those contributors. You know, this is the book sprint that can either can be online or in person. Here you see some people in 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 person. I think this was the um, the Open Science Handbook back in 2019 at TAB. The picture on the left with people shuffling things around. But it's very important for getting out this tacit or implicit knowledge in people's working practice. So like earlier on, you're talking about bringing together the academics or professionals around toxicology. It's their working practice that might not be so uh, easy to tease out. And that's part of what you get from the book sprint. And I suppose also I put in here classes because we're really using the teaching context for people to use our platforms and make publications in a sense for them to learn about open science. What is a DOI? How do I get it? Where do I deposit it? So they have to make the book. Um, and I, I've crammed two things together here on this slide. It really, I mean, uh, the, the, the workshop uh, being entitled being about um, uh, uh, making, uh, 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 well, making, making textbooks. Well, what I've seen in our context where research projects are making more like guides, um, or yeah, but it said guys, not so much textbooks, is that the first time round for those research groups, they really don't make their, um, their textbooks very well. They miss out the most basic things, which is really like a shame. So there's an easy win for you to make <laughs> just by getting those DOIs in there, being interoperable, having the license on the front, you know, you're there. Um, we can go to the next slide, please. Um, and so just here's some, some bigger examples. Um, and again, this was actually this in the public health sector that we happened to be doing at the beginning of COVID, which was around from an Academy of Public Health in Dusseldorf. It was, a, I think it was a 10 book series actually, but it was dealing with crisis management, outbreak management, public health law, um, all public health things. Uh, and this was very much an example of, as, as you like with the toxicology book, getting those healthcare professionals together. For the first time, there being an open access uh, textbook about, around their subject. Uh, so yeah, thanks, we can move on to the next slide. Uh, so that was a kind of, we had to do a lot of learning in that ourselves. Um, here's an example. So this is still using the first pipeline and really it's just trying to get that, you know, good typesetting. Uh, I'm sure as you all know, just that's, you know, going from a single source and trying to produce your outputs and having them be consistent. Ebooks are not the same as PDFs and not the same as uh, HTML and, you know, all those little things that snag you up. So here we put it into practice with uh, a Libra working group producing um, a guide for, um, well, for citizen science, and it's a four part, four part guide. Um, but yeah, we can go to the next slide, please. Um, now I move on to the second part, well, the second pipeline we have, and this is around computational publishing. So um, a bit like the Wiki project, but uh, bringing in a new, so the Wiki project is bringing in these various multimedia elements or interactive elements. There's a further part where you can have execu executable code in publication. So uh, yeah, Jupyter Notebooks is, is the kind of main platform that this is on. And there's been a variety of projects that wrap themselves around Jupyter Notebooks to, um, uh, to produce a book, I suppose, rather than just like a, a single um, instance of um, some executable code. So to make it book-like, have tables of contents and do those things. Um, we've, uh, so yeah, so I suppose the kind of what, what, and we're doing something kind of specific in that, which is really trying to get uh, content from remote sources automatically. So script getting, uh, we, we, we've been working in a cultural context. So we're looking at making like, uh, it's it, these are prototypes, but making prototypes of um, getting exhibition catalogs together of paintings or cultural artifacts. And so how you can script um, uh, a query that will use uh, Wikidata or Wikibase and retrieve that content into the publication. So then you start to have a mixture of the author's writing and then sourcing their content uh, through, through APIs. Um, and of course, we have to eat our own dog food. So we've made our own guides and taught people how to do it. And we have to do the thing ourselves. Uh, ourselves. Um, so uh, next slide, please. 
Um, and again, we do we we work with partners, and this is a, an example, as I say, of part prototyping, part um, uh, it being a practice. Um, so with the um, uh, Hanover University of Applied Sciences, uh, our, our colleague um, in Open Science uh, Lab, Dr. Ina Blumel, uh, runs a, a course called Open Knowledge. Uh, the students have to actually use the platform so we can see it works. Uh, they get to learn things, we get to learn things. So like, here's two examples where the students over a, a course in the spring took the platform, had to act, uh, customize it with their own queries in Wikidata, retrieve content uh, and make those outputs. Um, and if I kind of move on to the, yeah, the next slide, please. So this is quite a roller coaster, but the roller coaster is coming to a close. Um, and again, we're working with outside partners and one that we've um, interfaced uh, with here is called um, uh, an open research project called Semantic Climate. Uh, semantic climate is uh, itself to do with text data mining um, and looking at how to make climate uh, climate research more accessible. And one thing that they've been focusing on is the IPCC reports. Now, I mentioned earlier on smaller research projects that don't get their open access publishing technically very done particularly well. Unfortunately, the IPCC don't either with their um, uh, yeah with, with their reports they pr they produce very large PDFs without any interoperable source. I've only been recently retrospectively converting some of those PDFs to HTML. So there's a great need to find a what help them improve their publishing, um, but also for, obviously for people to access it. Um, I think the recent quote with uh, their what's called the um, uh, um, yeah, so the, the recent climate report, which came out in March, um, to, yeah, March, March this year, um, called the Synthesis Report. Uh, I think that um, the UN uh, Secretary General Antonio Guterres called it the how to guide how to guide to diffuse the climate time bomb. Um, so we hope we can make a small contribution in this way. Um, again. You can see we are a lab, we run through prototyping, we actually, we make publications with people. And I would say, you know, we, we're, we're on the experimental end, trying to make things uh, more solid. Um, and I will wrap it up there. Thank you. Thank you, Simon. Uh, yeah, the roller coaster came to a stop. <laughs> uh, so we have five minutes left. Do you have any questions or comments on what you just learned about these approaches? Please just open your microphone. Or if you do not like to, you can also add to the uh, chat, of course. So let me be the first to, to thank you, Simon. And uh, I'm very interested about the last uh, um, open textbook that you shared about and this uh, uh, writing experiment. I think that it's really timing and also very useful to consider how to integrate resources. And this uh, uh, work done on the IPCC reports make me think about other tools that are openly shared and then can be effectively uh, integrated, like, uh, for example, NROADS. I don't know if you are familiar with it. It's an open tool created by Climate Interactive. I will add the link to the chat. And it is uh, shared CC BY. Everything related to that is shared CC BY too. And it's very interesting to think about how to use these other tools available to create exercises uh, using what is already available and uh, um, somehow stimulating students uh, to go through different resources and different uh, references uh, to, to test how they can uh, act on climate change in order to reverse what we started years ago. So thank you. I will look into this example with more interest. Yeah, it's good you kind of mentioned that. It, it, um, I mean, storytelling is a, is a really big part of um, uh, actually of what the IPCC do. I mean, obviously it's some of it, the IPCC is important because, you know, it's it, science is very, very good. It is the definitive place to go to for 
uh, um, understanding climate change, but they do actually, they have a very clear narrative. They, uh, they, they look at different areas, so they break it down into like cryosphere or um, cities, uh, for example, uh, and they have a way of uh, marking, uh, yeah, ranking things as being highly probable, not probable, and then they look at mitigating um, uh, actions that can be taken. Uh, uh, and so they have all this knowledge in there, but it's in these incredibly huge, dense, very specialist P PDFs. <laughs> uh, so yeah, there's, there's technical things to do to help explain, to, to help um, uh, liberate the knowledge, but then it is very much about interpretation, contextualization, learning, sharing. Are there any other questions or discussion points? Simon, I can be <laughs> your next one. Um, if uh, there are no other questions from the audience at this point, I was wondering um, how uh, technologically savvy should the authors, the writers be to use the tools you are providing them with? Or is it really um, most of the um, knowledge, how to operate these systems uh, rest with your side, with the support side? Um, both authors and students, how technologically savvy should they be? Or do you expect them to be? Yeah, I mean, to be honest, I would really want an author to be able to think and think about their subject and not have to learn a new skill. <laughs> uh, I really respect that, and I think that's a necessity. Um, so as much as possible, we drive towards that. So hence, that's why on the writing side, like with Fidus Writer, um, we use that as an authoring tool because it's a it's a word pro it's an online collaborative word processor. Um, the reality of what we actually do at the moment is is not that because we we're much more kind of on a prototyping kind of research moving into being tools. Um, and if you move towards the computational end, then it starts to become about coding. Um, yeah, so I, I'm hugely sympathetic to want to make allow the authors to 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 think <laughs> and, and to write. Um, but we, yeah, we move between the two. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks a lot. If you have more uh, questions for Simon, don't hesitate to use the chat <laughs> as always, or for uh, other uh, questions to uh, the facilitators of the session in general, of course. Yeah. Thanks again, Simon. Super interesting. Now, I think uh, I have to look, sorry. Yeah, now we move virtually to Groningen um, and their uh, textbooks uh, approaches. Margaret, the stage is yours. Thank you, Lambert. Um, I'm really happy to tell you something about our experience with open textbooks. Um, we approach it a little bit different maybe than the other two because we are... I am from the University of Groningen Press, so um, it's a different approach because we work together with uh, the Open Science and Open Access team and with the University Press. So we can uh, share our experience already in publishing and share the knowledge in education. So actually having the best of both worlds. Um, at first, when we uh, thought about open textbooks, um, I was rather naive. I thought, OK, what is the difference between a textbook and a normal open access book? Just let uh, us use uh, the Open Monograph Press. That is the platform that we are already using for open access books. We have experience with it. It's all in place. Let's make it ourselves simple and uh, use that one. For journals, we use uh, open journal systems, and both of these platforms are from PKP and are open source platforms and community driven. And for us, that last page was really important because we wanted a large and active community when we set up our press, and we don't want to have the risk to be bought by a commercial publisher. Next. So um, the first thing we did was when we talked this uh, uh, pilot through uh, was to uh, um, make a call for applications. 
and see what uh, teachers would be interested in textbooks. We got seven applications and after talking to the teachers, we decided to go for four that were, in our opinion, the most eligible to also uh, make it to the end uh, of the project. But immediately we saw the problem that the teachers were much more innovative than we were. They had all those brilliant ideas about how a textbook would look like, uh, what can be in there, how it should be multimedia. And uh, that posed a problem because OMP is not suited for that. OMP is a perfect platform for a book that is traditional. It's just text and PDFs and nothing else. So we had to uh, look at uh, other um, textbooks and uh, at the internet, what was available there and uh, actually go back to the drawing table and uh, set up a completely different uh, project. Uh, for us, it was important that we were looking at uh, an open source uh, platform, that uh, we had enough staff to do it and uh, that it had be multimedia. Uh, next. <laughs> So we set up a requirement document and uh, we talked also with the teachers what they would like to have. And we set up with their requirements and what we uh, wanted, uh, uh, we set up a document with all the features the, the, um, uh, the platform should have, uh, what, it would, what it should be nice to have. And also we talked with our IT department with additional requirements like uh, security or um, the law. Uh, we can't have uh, like an open source platform or um, a platform in the cloud in the United States because of their laws and the Patriot Act. We are not allowed to work with that. So that was something that we had to take in consideration. And our IT department also had uh, additional requirements for where an uh, open source or uh, a platform that's in the cloud should um, apply to. Um, then after that, we did uh, we talked to the the, uh, the platform uh, owners and we did some demos and some testing, and eventually we we chose for Pressbooks. And Pressbooks is a complete uh, project, uh, a complete platform that allows you to design, to write in the site, the platform, the book, you can uh, format it and you can export it. It has multiple format uh, options like PDF, EPUB, MOBI, all kinds of uh, export uh, formats. The software is actually based on WordPress. I don't know if you ever worked with WordPress, but it is quite intuitive. So you don't need a lot of technical expertise to, to work with it. It's fairly idiot proof actually. And if you're not uh, able to work with it, uh, we also have um, a help desk that can help you further. Um, you can use it standalone or you can choose uh, for hosting because we had some money from the open size project. We thought we make it ourselves as easy as possible and choose for the hosting next. And with the hosting, it also has a lot of uh, demonstrations, uh, help uh, guides and all that sort of stuff. So it was fairly easy to start uh, our first uh, textbook with it. It has a large um, number of HPO, uh, H5P um, possibilities. Uh, that means that you can do a lot of interactive uh, quizzes, uh, uh, all kinds of stuff can you can do with it, uh, audios, videos. It has an annotation la layer, hypothesis, and that's easy if you want to have assignments into the textbook or you work, want to work directly with the students inside the textbooks. And uh, we thought it was has a really nice appearance and we can do anything with it that we wanted. Uh, next. And uh, this is uh, one of our latest uh, press books. Uh, the press books has a front end and a back end. And if you go to the front end to the catalog, this is how a book is explained. Uh, it has a such uh, a short abstract, um, the authors, the subjects. Um, it has uh, in it how much uh, activities is in there and what the CC license is. Next. And if you go then inside the book you had first, uh, this is the landing page. It has all the information you need. 
and um, we are not we're still working on this book. We also have to have the download options also in this page. Yeah? You can choose for download it as a PDF. Um, of course, one textbook is more uh, equipped for that to download it as a flat PDF than the other one, but uh, there are several options for that. Next. And you see in the landing page, you see immediately the content and next. You see also the book information. Of course, librarians love this little part, um, the licenses, the subjects, the keywords and all the other stuff. Um, what you have to need about the book is on the landing page and the metadata. And you see that it's just published. If you go inside the book, this is um, an example of uh, how it looks like. On the left side, you see the contents, and uh, the middle part is where the actual reading and uh, where the assignments are. And on the blank part on the other side, you can see uh, that um, there is nothing there, but there you see if hypothesis is active, you can see the annotations or you can grade your students or you can uh, interact with other teachers uh, on that part. Of course, it's only open if you're logged in, you can block it for the general public. And if your textbook is not yet finished yet, you can e also easily block a few uh, uh, chapters. And you can say chapter one or two is finished, you can be make that open for the public. And the other chapters are not finished yet. You can just lock it and then you see the little lock uh, on the content page. Next. Uh, we made also a demo book. It's uh, openly available. So if you are interested, you can look, have a look at it. It uh, shows us a little bit about how Pressbooks works and what is, every, uh, what is available in there and what kinds of assignments you can do. And it also helped us a little bit to um, to get our own experience with this um, um, platform. Next. And of course, it also has a back end. Uh, I will go shortly uh, over it, uh, not to bore you too much with all the technical details. But um, you see that it is quite uh, intuitive. Uh, you see on the one side, you see all the uh, things you can do with the back end. You start with the catalog. And you can choose your book that you want to work in. Next. Um, this is how you start when, uh, when you don't have anything left. Uh, you started with the book, you can incorporate, incorporate or you can import uh, content, or you can write directly into the, the, the platform. Um, here you see also the, uh, the ways that you can uh, fill in and all the details you need to fill in. It's just really very simple. Just type in the title and the authors and all that uh, sort of things. And then you have actually the front end matter you have already filled in. Next. Then you have the, it's set up as a front end, um, the body and a back end. The body is the actually book and the front end is like things as title, uh, author, metadata and all that sort of things. And the back end is just also how you want to show your back end. Uh, this is um, uh, uh, how it looks like if you have multiple books or multiple chapters. You can also choose here what you want to explain openly in public or what you want to work on. Just move around the sliders and uh, it's active or it's not active. Next. And uh, this is how you just write. It looks a little bit like uh, uh, what older version of Word was looking uh, like. Just you can type in it and you can edit it and um, you can import it then in your textbook. Next. Uh, you can set up a library. Uh, you can here import all the, um, the, uh, the photos, uh, the videos or the quizzes you want to use and just uh, drag them to your book. And uh, here's an overview of what you already did and what is inside your book. So you can uh, navigate really easily between all the assignments that you are making. Next. Uh, this is an example for some nice uh, features that uh, Pressbooks has. Uh, and the nice thing is also you don't have to build it up from square. Uh, Pressbooks also has a library. And if the book 
books are openly licensed. You can just clone some parts of the quizzes you like and adapt them and reuse them again. Next. Uh, these are also some uh, examples from um, interactive elements, timelines. Um, you can record yourself and we are now working currently on a language textbook. And then you can also make an assignment for your students where the students have to record themselves and you can hear what your students are doing or the student can listen to themselves already. Um, if you don't want to do it too difficult, you can also use uh, one of the uh, teams that are available and it's really easy to change the team. If you're on the end of the textbook and you don't like your team anymore, just take another team and the, it will work out to all the uh, textbook. So what are we going to do next? Um, we have now published um, three textbooks and we are currently busy with the fourth one. That was a later textbook. So that was also some new stuff that we had to learn. Uh, we never worked with later before and that was also a little bit of a challenge. Um, we have to try to make it from a pilot um, a service to a, to a sustainable uh, service. Uh, so that we have uh, structural costs and uh, see how it works and how we are going to cover those costs. Um, one of the things that we are now currently working on with other university presses is to see if we can use uh, press books um, a multi-institutional license. That we can have one license and that multiple universities can use the same um, license. It's easier for us, of course, uh, because then you can share your knowledge, uh, you can share the costs. And um, I think that would, would be a benefit of more um, uh, than only Groningen, if we could share all those uh, um, things that we already worked out. But it could be really easy for uh, like Nijmegen or other uh, universities that are working with textbooks if we have the same um, platform and we could share the license and the knowledge. Um, we are also looking at uh, more involvement of students because this uh, platform is really easy also to make a student assignments uh, in there. And um, yeah, well, let's hope that we can work uh, a little bit further on that. And I think that was my last one. Yes, yes thank you, Margaret. A lot of information, so I hope um, you will take the time to read it uh, a little bit slower, maybe in your own time. No, wonderful. Uh, yeah, are there immediately any questions or comments about what you just learned from the press books way of groaning? And okay, so I have, I have an initial question. I have one question. Yeah, Sylvia. if possible. Um, all the assignments, can you collect the data? And uh, for example, we have uh, a collaboration with Groningen on the I Guide Me project to give students real time feedback on the pro pro uh, progress in uh, learning outcomes and learning activities. Is it possible to collect the data so um, we can visualize this in an I Guide Me dashboard? Um, we didn't try that yet um, because we're just starting it and we are hoping to get the module from Pressbooks that um, uh, uh, also um, incorporates the textbook directly to the LMS. And then I think it's easier to... Yeah, um, yes. Yeah. <laughs> so, and we are hoping to have start that in uh, the autumn of this year. Okay, nice. I'd like to hear more from that. Uh, yeah. Because it's a collaboration with Coast Winners from your institution. Yeah. Well, I will remember that name. So if we have yeah. to call it that, then we will um, address it super. to you and Coast also. Yeah, yeah. Thank we you work so with him, so we know Coast. Okay, yeah. super, super. Uh, I have one question about the license model of Pressbooks. Um, is the subject of their license that you uh, have uh, your instance of Pressbooks hosted with them and then maybe additional services and the software itself is open source or how does it work? Yeah, the software itself is open source. Um, so you can use it standalone. Um, but um, we didn't choose that because uh, it is, uh, we already are 
uh, hosting uh, OGS and OMP standalone, and we didn't want to have uh, we didn't have the IT personnel to also host that standalone. And um, I change. I'm not sure. I have to look into that. But they changed some of their um, um, policies about standalone working. I think. So I'm not sure how that works. Thanks. Anyway, Margaret, this is uh, already interesting. So maybe one quick last question, okay? <laughs> oh, just just a quick one. Do, do you do in WordPress? Do you does it now integrate and use the Gutenberg blocks editor, or do you have like a uh, an older WordPress editor? Well, I said that it it works like WordPress. It is oh, okay. not WordPress, but it's it's based on WordPress. If you have experience in WordPress, you immediately recognize it, that they build it the same way. Okay. Okay, I get you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We have so much content today that uh, we need to stick a little bit to the schedule. And uh, again, uh, thanks a lot, Margaret. Thanks uh, for all the presenters we had by now. And now we turn to uh, a funny a little exercise, uh, uh, which is new for, for, for our series here, which is an open mic. So if you have exp if you have contributed to any kind of textbook project, which made use of other tools than the ones we discussed by now, let us uh, know and uh, we, we give you like one or two minutes or so to tell us about your experience with maybe some other tooling a little bit spontaneous i must admit but maybe next to press books the ada uh, pipelines um or o open manuscript or wiki wiki ways there might be other tools out there that we have already people here in the room who made this experience and use use them don't be shy you do not have to be okay otherwise uh yeah if yeah <laughs> maybe um not thanks a lot anyway for the super interesting questions and discussions that we have by now um and then i would say uh, since we are already uh very advanced in the schedule we give you another working exercise <laughs> which you can do on your own individually and this is about starting your own open textbook project so we um, made a list of like 10 things you could think about um, so in terms of uh, who will be the audience of your textbook so the most likely thing that you that will be your next open textbook who will be the learners um, what kind of features do you need what what other um, what what contributors you would look for ways to contribute also and is this resulting in some demand that you have for supporting infrastructure or advice and um we give you, Paola just gave you the link in the chat. And I would like to ask you to make a copy of that document and keep it in your own uh, Google Drive file space, so to say. Uh, maybe it looks like, oh, I have to do all this in 10 minutes. This is, uh, but, 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 but keep that copy because it gives you a nice starting point. And after these 10 minutes, we will ask you to share some of this uh, in another document and also uh, discusses. Um, so take your time. Uh, are there any um, questions uh, about this exercise? Do you understand what we ask you to do? Okay, I hear no questions right now. So uh, we will be back in, at um, uh, a quarter past 2 p.m. Uh, so in about 10 minutes, see you then.
Sorry, uh, what is also possible if you do not like to use Google Docs from the file menu in the left, you can download the file as a Word document and edit it on your own machine. This is also possible.
You have one minute left for your writing. Please wrap up. Okay, I think we can wrap up the individual part of the assignment now. And what we'd like to invite you to do is uh, to go to this Padlet. You'll get the link in the chat soon and share your ideas and insights with each other and with us and discuss it. So please feel free to open your mic and comment on um, whatever section you'd like to talk about. But also please uh, try to copy paste, um, if feasible right now, your insights into the columns that you see on the Padlet. Um, I think uh, Paula will share the link with you right away in the chat, in the general. Thanks a lot, Paula. Indeed. So please uh, welcome into the Padlet. I will now try to share that page instead, instead of the slides. Let's see. Yeah, let's share the Padlet instead. I hope that's what you're seeing. Yes, Mira, thank you. Yes, okay, good. Not sure what I'm uh, broadcasting at the moment. <laughs> Very sorry about that. So um, we see a, a range of topics appearing. Very interesting what kind of uh, open textbooks you consider for your next project. We see that podcasts are there, um, climate-related plans, also highly relevant indeed. And the target audience of readers and learners are high schoolers. That's also quite interesting and original. Most of our projects, uh, speaking from the University of Groningen experience, would have to do with students or sometimes the general society, the general outside community as the target audience. So we also see a nice addition to the range of topics, privacy and security, academic skills, academic success, apprentice level, level engineering. So we see the, the scope is rather large. Good to see that. And the learners readers are also students, uh, specifically for some projects, first year, third level students. Now, also good that you're thinking along the lines of who can help you, what kind of expertise you can involve in collaborating on such projects. So those could be learners themselves in the spirit of open pedagogy, co-creating knowledge, co-creating textbooks with teachers, um, but also people, technical, people with technical expertise, uh, colleagues uh, such as podcast, podcast hosts, editors, scriptwriters, speakers, I assume some of this expertise might need to be outsourced um, outside of the institution you work in. At least that's the case um, with us. Sometimes we need to outsource that. Sometimes you can find a nice range of expertise in-house. You can also uh, see that people uh, need uh, learning technologies, 
technologists, uh, design specialists to be involved, uh, but also um, for the authors themselves to plan stakeholders, communities affected by plans should also be involved in the collabor collaborative efforts. University Press, yes, that's a good addition um, as a collaboration that could be set up, but also technical staff, engineers, civil society. So the society um, you basically uh, would like to share this um, knowledge with and work with educational advisors, instructional designers, yes, students, mid journey. The educational setting in which you see your project operating, that's also really interesting. Uh, sometimes it's it has to do with the level, the year of education, the level education. We're talking either about bachelor or master um, level, uh, professional training, public education. Sometimes uh, you're targeting individual learning that could happen via podcast, Kindle as a device and similar tools. And uh, we're also talking about blended learning here. So a very nice and uh, diverse range that we're addressing here. What kind of features would you like to see for learners and for teachers present in your well, future textbook or a platform to work on this textbook? Um, the ability to have summaries, exercises for self-testing, printed version are also printed versions are also important, especially for learners, those who prefer to read um, not from the screen, but uh, to learn from paper feedback, TOC. And what are you currently lacking or what do you need? to start with. Someone addresses the clear choice for uniform soft software and tools. Um, other um, colleagues are talking about quality criteria that we could agree on for textbooks. Can we collaborate on creation of such quality criteria? Now, I would really like to give the floor to one of you and um, will let us know which of the subjects you'd like to elaborate on. What do you need, perhaps, or what kind of environment you would like your teachers, your authors, and your readers, your target audience to work in? Who can help you? Do you already have a view or do you know specific names at your university whom you can approach? Uh, please feel free to open the microphone and uh, share with us. This is very enriching for all of us. Anyone willing to share? Please go ahead. Well, I thought it was I'm, um, I was interested to see at the beginning there the how to use AI with with a critical approach. Hmm. And um, I saw an interesting panel that I'll, I'll actually try to get hold of the video. It was part of Force Eleven's um, summer school, and there were a few people talking about AI in education, in uh, in academic publishing and it was interesting to see all the different places it could and couldn't be used um, and obviously already being used so like for example um, you know you can't use it if you're assessing a grant application because the grant texts are submitted confidentially and so you couldn't put them into a, a, a black boxed AI to give you a summary you know to share so it's just kind of um so yeah, criti uh, uh, critical approaches, and obviously it's moving fast. So it appears you can self-host AIs, so you can know you don't have to break that, um, you know, or don't have to, yeah, obviously kind of break digital sovereignty considerations because you can self-host. Or I've seen recently people proxying, so you don't have to hand over the data. Um, you can proxy to. Um, say like open AI which isn't open and I can see many more um, publications appearing on this subject also in the format of open textbooks so I'm sure that more and more colleagues will be uh, publishing and hopefully also reusing each other's materials on this subject well in the spirit of sharing and in the spirit of open education really good to hear thanks Simon for sharing would anyone else like, like to talk about what you're currently lacking, needing, maybe from the community, maybe we can help each other. Maybe we can co-work, co-create, co-develop um, some of the things that are lacking. And of course, as somebody says, it's purely a thought experiment. Um, it is, yet we would really like you to hold on to this document 
and maybe in time you have a little bit of time or resources to spend to dedicate to this topic and uh, grab your chance why not and then work it from there and of course we will be sharing all these materials and all collected uh, provided input with you on Zenodo uh, Paula will share all these links with you after the the webinar and the recording as well so your all your good work will no, not be in vain it will be shared and will get to be to live on whenever you would like to go back look back at what others were suggesting at what your thoughts were at this point of time of your project development you can always do that may i just comment on the last column that i see mira mm -hmm. because yes. uh, i i contributed uh, uh, with uh, a sentence myself and i i see that uh, i'm not the only one that is looking at uh, resources tools and time and or funds because time is also very important and uh, uh, as you uh, promptly suggested it would be great to share some of the skills we have and consider uh, designing something together because uh, that would be very helpful with the lack of funding and the lack of time you know a, a great way to to deal with it is to put skills together and uh, I don't see this coming uh, at short notice in my con personal professional context but I think that uh, an opportunity to think about uh, a, a first experience with open textbook uh, um, presented to uh, institutional stakeholders as an opportunity to collaborate uh, between different institutions would be interesting by itself. So this could be a way to, to draft a proposal around it, even when funding or time is not there yet. Highly agree with that indeed. And uh, it could be as easy as basically uh, jumping on another already existing collaboration and offering them an open textbook as a vehicle to advance their collaboration or as a very tangible output of that collaboration. Think about your university teachers working with university teachers in a different place and they usually have to show something for this um, type of uh, cooperation. Why not create an open textbook, um, a guidebook, any other kind of um, publication that could serve the purpose and also have educational use, also um, be more than just a, a temporary project output, so to say. So yes. there are also low threshold ways to do it, of course, but as you rightly mentioned, we do need time and resources, of course. It's not granted that all of us have, have that. So I really hope that we can pool our resources as much as possible um, to help implement that and facilitate that. Yeah, and then another thing that comes to mind just now, uh, I often work on uh, European uh, fundings, uh, uh, such as Erasmus Plus projects or other kind of funding uh, across other uh, faculties in the university. And uh, we never yet uh, added an open textbook uh, as an output uh, in any of the projects mm. we wrote so far. So why not try this as we are doing uh, on a daily basis with MOOCs, uh, which yeah. is much more popular and uh, also expensive in a way, in, a, in yeah. the same way that designing an open textbook can be with different purposes and maybe mixing together different uh, teaching and learning strategies, we might be even more effective. So I will keep this in mind myself. <laughs> True. I wonder if there's anyone else in our little community today willing to share, or maybe you have come up with some use cases that are unexpected and uh, new to all of us, but very natural to you. If you'd like to share, please feel free to, to do so. Okay, no pressure. <laughs> You're always welcome to go back and look back at the comments and the suggestions that uh, we shared here in this Padlet. And I will stop sharing or try to stop sharing this screen, go back to the slides. I hope you can see the slides now, right? Good. And I will give the floor to Paula who will wrap up our session.
Yeah, thank you, Mira, and thank you all of you, Sylvia, Margaret, Simon, and Lambert. It's been a pleasure, and I again I learned so much from you, and I'm sure that all participants uh, are feeling the same. So I'm really grateful. I also think that uh, looking back to your examples, even with some language barrier here and there, uh, we will find, uh, uh, and I will certainly will find the food for thoughts moving forward in order to understand how uh, how to manage our first pilot action in the future in order to design our own uh, first uh, open textbook. Um, I'm thankful for all of you who have been in the room today. And I also hope that uh, we will continue this conversation not only through the workshop experiences that we will uh, organize in the future, but you can always reach out to us and uh, let us know if you need our support or if the network uh, of the European uh, Open Education Librarian can uh, uh, welcome you in any way and uh, we can start thinking about designing something together. Um, I also think that uh, um, it will be useful for us to have your feedback. So in case you want to suggest uh, any other topic that you want us to address in our workshop series, please feel free to add subjects in the chat now or reach out to us in the future. We will be happy to consider your proposals to, to put a, a workshop devoted to a specific subject in our calendar. So uh, keep continuing uh, following us and, uh, and uh, sharing with us your needs. Uh, and we can continue building open education together because that's what we are here for. So thanks again and thank all the facilitators in this workshop. Thanks everyone. Yeah, thanks. Thank you, have a nice day. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. And feel free to reach out to us if yeah. necessary. We're all really open to, to sharing more. Absolutely. Yes. Thanks again. Bye, everyone. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Thank you.